This is Matt DeMille, and this is my commentary on Heartbreak Ridge. Heartbreak Ridge. There's always another horizon. Always more to learn in life. <clears throat> First up, I have never officially served, so I cannot speak with authority or pass judgment. In this commentary, my observations will be coming mostly from the opinions of others, mostly family, decades ago. I'm not going to offer any great insight into this movie, either as a movie or militarily. For me, it's a family favorite, and I'm watching it more for personal purposes. It's Independence Weekend. This is a patriotic movie for me. Like the military, you can volunteer to serve in my beloved movie commentary corps, or not. There ain't no draft. <clears throat> of course, like Highway, an old conspiracy war horse, I won't be able to help myself, and I'll surely slip into some conspiracy and occult commentary here and there. <clears throat> Highway gets drunk and starts wars. I'm always drunk and start wars. Within self. <clears throat> Wars of thought. Or maybe an open bar of thought. Hmm, that's a good thought. Uh, but opening thoughts. I, I love America. I grew up with G.I. Joe and Clint Eastwood. And though I've never formally served, I have still defend this country many times against enemies both foreign and domestic. And I have paid a high price for it many times. Would I pay the ultimate price? In the past, yes. Not so sure nowadays. Long story about my family, but these days I fly the Templar flag. I have my own quest. I fly under the banner of the original flag of the United States most people don't know about. My life is over, and my previous alliances died with it. I'm a free man now. I have my honor. But dying does lose a lot of promises. Not all, but a lot. And now I have other purpose. My family. Explain to you such things as going from the black and white of the grid, the prison, the matrix. And so we begin. Heartbreak Ridge. The movie, the commentary. Heartbreak Ridge, uh, based on a real incident in Korea, 1951. More of an army thing than a marine thing. And Clint fought to make this movie, but the army kept dissing him. The new army, major powers kind of shit. The new army didn't like the throwback, the nasty character of Highway. So the Marines were up for it. Hoorah! But by the end, they didn't want to work with Eastwood anymore, any either. <laughs> Again, the new military. My brother, Darren, my real brother, bitched about this a lot back in the day. And he was right. Look, I mean, now we've gone from major powers to compliance with foreign powers. 
compliance with the coup along with red shoes. <sighs> Highway would have never stood for this bullshit going on today. This was the early creep of communism into America. Clint Eastwood was just pointing it out. I have nothing bad to say about Eastwood. He's a patriot all the way. The old-fashioned way. The way that works. Well, maybe one bad thing I can say about Clint. Nobody's perfect. But that whole Chris Kyle movie? Short version of the story. 9-11 was bullshit. So promoting it and Chris Kyle is like... It's like pushing the rainbow hair and the red shoes in the military. Sorry, Clint. But other than that one movie, you're awesome. Everyone's got a fault. I mean, shit, even Sean Connery has a Highlander sequel, so-called, on his IMDb. We can all make mistakes. <clears throat> it's not like the military hasn't made a few. Back to Korea. Um... A rough story here about Clint. Roughly at the time of Heartbreak Ridge, um, Clint was a lifeguard. <laughs> the Marines uh, on this movie gave him some shit about it. But hey, it was his assignment. And do you know what happened? Very briefly, uh, Clint was on leave to visit family up here in uh, my backyard, JBLM, Fort Lewis McCord. There was no flight back, so he squeezed into a cargo compartment of a single-person plane, which went down. And he had to swim two miles uh, back to shore. Whew! Is there smoking in this courtroom? with its alchemical colors of transformation. He is transforming Thomas Highway. Ah, he's, uh... <clears throat> Thomas Highway. Gospels of Thomas. Ever study him? No wonder they were censored from the Bible. Jesus was quite the troublemaker. Kind of like Tom here, actually. Kept getting into trouble with the authorities. Thomas Highway the road of life which he represents and all the wisdom that comes with it and the potholes <laughs> the scars I mean look at him tell me Highway's face isn't 50 miles of bad road or 50 years of hard experience the sky is the limit the sign that's wisdom for life not just the core it's also the horizon there's always more to learn. Like about Clint. Yeah, I wonder how many of the Marines and others that gave him shit during this movie for not being an actual Korean vet actually knew about that story where he was serving. He did go down. The plane went down and he had to swim two miles back to shore. At night, in shark-infested waters, not even knowing which direction lay the land. Clint's a legit badass. Whether in the theater of combat or not, he earned respect, I'd say. He earned the benefit of the doubt, at least. Had he been in combat, I think he'd have done just fine. He's proven he keeps a cool head under pressure, and he's got guts. Anyway... <sighs> All things considered, I'm viewing this as a movie in the spirit of America, not as a historical document. Clint Eastwood's just playing G.I. Joe here, telling a good story. And a great story. The old lion coming to terms with a new world, passing the torch on. Hey, is that Isis in the lower right? More out. I <laughs> wonder if his CO here has uh, got a lodge on base. Ah, he's in one of the secretive... St he's in the Stonecutters. Ah. Now, the point of this movie the uh, is a classic coming-of-age story. For the young Marines, too, but especially for our hero himself. It's a story of life. 
not the military exclusively. It's just set against the backdrop of the military. Cycles of life. However, it's a story, I gotta say, perfectly set in the military environment. And with all due respect for our military, Clint loves our armed forces, our country, as do I. <clears throat> respect not just the flag but everyone that died for it served for it bled for it not just the soldiers but the families too <sighs> and everybody else <laughs> like stitch jones <sighs> freedom to be yourself <laughs> mario van peebles talk about him a bit. Even though I haven't seen much of his stuff, can't say I'm a big fan, I can say I am a fan of Stitch Jones. I love Mario Van Peebles in this movie. It's great. And, you know, all due respect to Mario, I, I thought he dropped the ball here a little. This was a great launch into a, a better career. Like Eastwood passing the torch at the end of the movie. Uh, instead of going gangsta, which he did more of, uh, instead of that, Peoples could have gone into a more of a patriotic uh, military movie career or something. I think of his going gangsta as kind of a backstep. I think it limited him. He's a he's a great performer with virtually maybe unlimited charisma, and he sort of painted himself into a racial corner. A shame. You know, Mario, you are half German. Your mother, Maria Marx. Yeah. Well, he did do the USS Indianapolis story a few years ago, 2016, so credit there. But then in real life, he wants to make D.C. a 51st state. <clears throat> You've been hanging around the Panthers too long, Mario. Uh, maybe it's better you didn't do more military movies, but... You know, back and forth, though, he does wear a a shirt of, uh, like, Obama's Joker face on it and with this caption, What Could Go Wrong? While simultaneously wearing a, a red MAGA hat that says, Make America Think Again. I like that. I think more than a t-shirt, believe it or not. Uh, differing opinions and he has a right to them it's america we have a right to think what we want to think first amendment to think what we want to think say what we want to say and like what we want to like and who we want to like love who we want to love and i love mario's performance as stitch jones ayatollah of rock and roller he made a great wrestler too though you know not a great hippie man. <laughs> Ain't been no hippies running for centuries, man. What are you talking about? There's one right cheer. I've got my American flag shirt on and my American flag hippie headband. I'm growing my hair out. I'm smoking my weed. What are you talking about? There's no hippies running for centuries. Stitch shit. <clears throat> Oh, I just realized I think I might set a record for beer pops during this movie. <laughs> uh, oh, the magazines. The highway sure has a problem with the divine feminine. While he's going to get the young cubs like uh, Jones in line, he has to get his own house in order. Jones knows nothing about life yet but he has no problem with women while highway has a problem with women but 
knows nothing about life anymore. Do you say hippie man? Ain't been no hippies running for centuries. You've been freeze dried to do a hard time. Now they're a great combo of characters and uh, storytelling uh, about life. Storytelling elements about life. And like a true team, they come to respect each other and help each other and save each other's asses. Yeah. Good storytelling. And uh, Mario's just as much a part of it as Clint here. I mean, he's great. Um, and while I haven't seen most of his movies, actually, I, I do want to comment on one. Since they're on the road, you ever hear of a movie called Redemption Road? Uh, directed by Mario Van Peebles about a decade ago. Interesting movie. Interesting script that started uh, in Jessica and I's apartment. A couple of my AFI film fellows were toying around with this script which started off as a haunted house story with, uh, some very freaky shining like elements to it around in the corner and seeing the dog standing on its hind legs talking to someone what it's like the bear towards the end of the shining what the fuck is it it was this weird supernatural script that three of us dreamed up in our very Pirates of the Caribbean, Indiana Jones decorated Hollywood apartment that turned out later to be very haunted in a very Shining-like way. <clears throat> oh, alchemical colors at the bar, too. Everyone's transforming. Black, white, red, gold, just like the courtroom. They're all learning on the road of life, anyway. Redemption Road that script even i got out of it early because it was morphing into more of a racial justice thing and i lost interest when the supernatural element was quickly taken out of it and i forgot all about it then a few years later i hear you know whatever <laughs> and then recently when elon musk decided to do his hostile takeover of twitter i checked my account for the first time in 13 14 years I hadn't used it since August 2008, but apparently Redemption Road's own website followed me. So I guess some of my old film fellows were like, hey, DeMille. <laughs> no, I left Hollywood in 2011 when I ran afoul of the satanic cults. I could talk about that in the Marine Corps too, but I won't. I'll just refer, refer you to the works of Douglas Dietrich out of the Presidio. Controversial conspiracist, even amongst conspiracists, but he's got some interesting and hard data you can't ignore. Let's not forget Colonel Michael Aquino. Let's certainly not forget uh, the history of the Presidio. Oh, you think the Sean Connery movie with one murder was it? Oh, hell no. Hell no. Throughout the 60s and 70s, they sacrificed all kinds of children there. They're not far from the Bohemian Grove. Sad Fran shithole in silly commie valleys, just as much a part of the New World Order as Hollywood and the city of lost angels, if not more so. Now, Colonel Michael Aquino, 1988, goes on the Oprah Winfrey show in his full satanic regalia, white face paint, black robes and you know eye shadow the whole nine yards and talks you know he's the guy that, that wrote the book for the the head chaplain for all the military not just the marines the head chaplain wrote the handbook for all the other head chaplains and all branches of service and he's an active public satanist oh, but it's the 80s people don't care well don't forget colonel michael aquino and i certainly won't forget my family my brother darren who actually did get an invite to go there when he enlisted the language school in San Francisco my brother Darren <clears throat> born 1970 a bit too much uh, Rambo in his teenage diet and he was obsessed with the military and that's where he went <coughs> At first he was going to go Marines, but he actually went 
the recruiter talked him into the army. He wasn't the strongest uh, willed person. Um, he was smart, though, and well educated about life back in the day. He saw all this shit for what it was the new military. He's the one that educated me about the fucking politicians screwing everything up. Bunch of commies, pussies. Political correctness, as George Carlin later confirmed, is just tyranny with manners. Freedom is rough and hard, edgy like Tom Highway. Yeah, he educated me to do a lot of this. And then he enlisted out of high school. He went airborne, Fort Benning, Georgia. Can't say he made a career out of it. He was too, motiva too motivated by the movies. Not enough realities. But he educated me to them. <clears throat> like major powers here. Such a goddamn Twinkie. He's an early soy boy. Pogue. And the sort my brother didn't need. Or any of us, for that matter. Like when Clint wanted to make this movie, a lot of major powers like guys kept shutting him down. You'd think that the new military would welcome the positive PR a Clint Eastwood movie would bring. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, and forget all the free advertisement and recruitment they'd get from movies like this. Hell, I mean, they got my brother. How many others signed up fresh out of high school because of this movie? Or Rambo, or whatever movie doesn't give an accurate portrayal of the military. So what? As if the military's really any different than a movie. With all their excuses and bullshit. It was a training accident. Bullshit. He died in a black op. Not my brother, just speaking in general. Just all the lies coming from the military. All the fiction that comes out of their PR. Oh, but we can't make a Clint Eastwood movie. Fucking pogues. Fucking new military. Defunding the military in the late 80s. Trying to get rid of things. The communist insurgents are coming in. As uh, President Reagan at the time warned, if uh, communism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of liberalism. Red shoes in the military and all this major powers kind of shit. Pogues. Speaking of pogues, oh God, here we go. <clears throat> but credit to Ring. He is ignorant, not arrogant. There's a difference. Major powers is arrogant. Ignorance is when you don't know any better, but you mean well, you, or you can mean well. Arrogance is when you do know better, but you're still an asshole. That's Major Powers. Lieutenant Ring, he comes around by the end. You know, he, he adapts, he overcomes, and he improvises. He learns. <clears throat> doesn't matter how great you were, you know, by others' accolades. How great are you? How strong is your character? Oh, boy. And speaking of which, here we go. Here, or rather, here comes Matt DeMille for gaming. So I'm ready to game master this fucking game group. Or for movie making or... Masonic Lodge or anything in my life for all of life itself. Here's here's Matt, old school and serious about it. Here's people not listening to the Game Master or my conspiracy theories, motherfuckers. I am the Blood Prince of Hollywood. I've been to the Illuminati Eyes Wide Shut parties. I lost my fiance to Disney, Epstein, and all the rest of them, motherfuckers. I've studied UFOs my whole life. I've been through Stargates and I've got the evidence to prove it. You all want to call into the Alex Jones show and act like you know what the fuck's going on. Well, guess what? All of from Hollywood to the Masons and my former friends, you people do not impress me. The fandom meaningless kicks butt. Fucking... <sighs> 
these guys, this recon full tune is like so many base thinkers, young souls, all the fools in my life I've had to suffer. People who don't care, don't try, don't know, don't want to know how pathetic they truly are. They can't handle it. Soy boys, social justice Twinkies, Zoe Feist. Well, 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 well. <laughs> if that ain't just a classic scene that I've seen more than once. Paying the price. How many social justice Twinkies you think have paid the price? God, those eyes of Clint. It's like the devil. A serpent. Well, Zoe Feist. <laughs> I've had the ear of more than one of you. And you are all starting to pay the price now, aren't you? Starting to learn my flock. You think I've been rough on you and you gotta try to call the Swede on me or some shit. I like how he's got a hold of him not just by his earring. Listen to old wisdom. It's a crucifix. It's a cross and he just tore it off. You lack faith. You are not strong. It's all exoteric. It's jewelry. It's bling bling. Get your alchemical gold going inside you. Not your gold chains you're wearing outside you. Find your strength inside, motherfucker. <clears throat> oh, I can't help it. Mario's so good at just playing the, the young, arrogant tough, isn't he? priceless and all these guys it's such a great cast a great supporting cast great crew everything it's a great movie uh, globe and anchor now that's a marine corps bar for you simplify again i've not served i've never even been on a marine corps base i've never been to camp pendleton or uh, paris island i can't say that, but you know what? All the respect in the world. I'd have liked to in a different life. I wanted to serve. My brother talked me out of it. He gave me this BS about how I was the last of my family line, so I couldn't enlist. Otherwise, I was very much considering it. Well, I deferred to my older brother, and I took his like following orders. I just did what I was told. I was a good soldier, a good in the family, I mean, that's what was important to me, still is, always will be, that's why I do these commentaries and say what I'd say about Hollywood and all the rest, it's all a love letter to Jessica, or Aggie, <laughs> We'll talk about her when we meet her, but yeah, it's my Jessica. She's even appropriately named. We'll get to that. Notice the bar, how chemical colors, black, white, red, gold, except for the obligatory military green. You gotta have that, but. <clears throat> it's all about transformation, and it's a lodge. He's lodging here. and get his old room back. Hell yes. Can you run a tab on this? Hell no. Now that's a lodge, all right. <laughs> the Sonic Lodge. Oh, here we are. Going from one beer to the next. He's bar hopping. And there's Aggie. The uh, Divine Feminine, the Scarlet Woman, all rolled into one in this story. Bush, the mountain in the upper right. Hey, Bush was going to be taken over in a few years here. He was 
Bonesman Bush was uh, VP at the time. You know, Reagan. No, fuck Reagan. We got Stitch Jones. <laughs> Tell me he's not a wrestler. He's making his entrance to the ring right now. <laughs> it's kind of a black Shawn Michaels or Chris Jericho type, more. Which makes. What does that make Tom Highway? The Undertaker. Yeah, this is Mark Calloway sitting in the bar having said, Oh my God, I've got Jack Daniels here. Isn't that Taker's drink of choice? I need some cucumbers to go with it. The warrior with his axe. The Templar Knight in his lodge. Uh, and hello, Aggie. <clears throat> the Divine Feminine, the Love Interest, and, based on your hair and what you wear, the Scarlet Woman. Although, <clears throat> the, Scarlet, the Scarlet Woman's an alchemical, occult symbol from Brother Caroli and others, but... I've known many Scarlet Women in my life, many Scarlet Women, but only one love that like highway in this movie i in my commentaries keep going back to jessica although i hope she's done a lot better than this i don't know my new spiritual path will not allow me to return to you her last words to me over the phone in hollywood and i've been off doing various assignments on the quest but uh, one day jessica expect tom Matthew Thomas DeMille Highway to show up. <clears throat> yeah. My Aggie. You know what Aggie means? The etymology of Aggie? Agriculture. What, like barley, hops, and wheat? <clears throat> no, more like... Uh, Jessica with her gardening. You know, whoops. <clears throat> Open the third eye. And she got me started smoking weed. <sighs> Aggie, Jessica. Aggie also means a gate, a gate, as in marble or hard stone, often used in jewelry. Suits her character, externalisms like Stitch Jones and his gold chains, or Jessica and her new spiritual path and all that bullshit. Nothing of any true value. But interesting, nonetheless, here in this movie, a gate, marble or hard stone jewelry, and the actress that plays her, Marsha Mason. Ah. <clears throat> Mason? Marble? Yeah. Now, okay, whoa, 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 what we got going on here? Stitch Jones. Now, Stitch, to his credit, is actually being the peacemaker here. He's doing the right thing. And he would have succeeded if old Roy here didn't have a need to bully Marines, which Tom Highway calls him out on. He's not a man's... Now, the, Clint Eastwood was cool with the military, even if he wasn't a vet. This guy, he's more like what you need to pick on. Oh, and he just admitted it. I chew up jarheads and spit them out. Yeah, that's what you like, because you're not a real man, and you got to... Prove it exoterically, externally. You don't have it internally, esoterically. Well, that's Jedi back talk to you, mofo. <clears throat> if Clint Eastwood had been like a, yeah, I'm a tough guy, like, you know, Hillary Clinton, I was dodging bullets on the tarmac, I could understand the Marines giving him shit, but okay, he was assigned to be a lifeguard, so what? But he loves the military and he's all for you. 
He's Gunny Highway, not the owner of the palace. Yeah. And Stitch Jones, man! Stitch Jones, if you think about it, he actually does save Gunny Highway here. If Jones hadn't uh, given Mr. Authority, Roy, that's his name, if he hadn't given Roy an excuse to say, hit the road, there's no other way out of that fight. Which Roy would lose, and, and, and then Highway would be busted and done with the Marines. So, Stitch Jones is the hero here. Good on Stitch. He's right. Every, he just saved your life. What was that, Gunny? Might as well go to town tonight, laugh and make fools of yourself. Well, actually, that was almost you. <laughs> Highway needs the new recruits. Just as much as they need him. But he doesn't see that yet. He's got his own new Horus line. New horizon to seek, a new highway to travel, a new journey to make. The Templar Knight on his quest, the Doors of Perception, the Lodge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> what you... What you picking on Stitch Jones for? He just saved your life. This man has no social graces. <clears throat> The Marines are looking for a few good men. Unfortunately, you ain't it. <laughs> it's like the Masons make good men better. Now, this is the 80s. Now, this is every pack of young cubs that needs to be taught by the old lion. This isn't a military documentary. This is a movie. This is emotion. This is theater. This is getting at the heart of humanity. There's always a bunch of young punks that need to be taught by the grizzled old wise veteran. The master of the dojo. Yoda. Gunny Highway is fucking Yoda, man. <laughs> He's gonna make all Mario Van Skywalker stand on his fucking head. That's how you learn. And Faggetti. Going for the Tom Cruise look. Well, it is the 80s. It was a year after Top Gun. I'm sure they were going for a little bit of that. <laughs> and this is what we think of that. <clears throat> Nothing against Tom Cruise or Top Gun, but he does look like my brother, Darren. <sighs> I think Highway's response is how I feel about that. Exoterically, anyway. My old life emotion. But as I have learned in my Jedi wisdom ways over the years... Here's another way to look at that scene with the sunglasses. Take the blinders off. <clears throat> Just like when you get to boot camp. Of course they're going to run you hard, and I believe they should do it. Granted, I haven't been there, but the old-fashioned way that wins wars. We won wars up until all this pussyfoot and got in the military. Then we started doing police actions. And from Korea, Vietnam onward, there's been no victory. You have to teach him hard. That's just life. That's what works. Going along to get along. Safe spaces. All this excuse. I, 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 I was horrified to hear things I learned from my brother about how the military was becoming sissified and I thought oh shit there goes our defenses that's not political that's just realistic that's nature and of course he's got the power he's got the good looking woman with him it's not just his arrogance and ego it's also the sign of the times the, the new military not just the new marine corps the new military <clears throat> the commies Undermining everything. The slow creep of communism. I'll quote Gunnery Sergeant Hartman. The free world will conquer communism. God, blood, love, and submarines. 
and we the people to become the Marines and everybody else. <laughs> oh, that, was fun. Ah, that was a great moment. Now, of course you wouldn't do that in a real military, but it's a movie. and ah, This is real military. You're running now, motherfuckers. <laughs> ah, yeah, I love running. This movie, in part... You can blame some Vince McMahons and other things as well. But, oh, the Horus lie in the highway, and he's going to teach all these base thinkers. These are the apes outside Kubrick's monolith. Highway's in the pineal position, if you think about it. But back to me running. This movie kept, is one of those inspirations that's kept me going all these decades of endless miles and marathons. And These scenes here, th this is what I love. Heat gravel under my shoes just keeping pace mile after mile feeling my body get stronger tasting the dry warm air in my lungs just feels great <laughs> and good moral lessons that go along with it not just self empowerment and mastery but like Clint there the, the tortoise and the hare the slow and steady wins the race good lesson for all aspects of life keep steady keep balanced keep going don't fall into the emotion of the moment you know don't be out there burning looting and murdering i mean peacefully protesting bunch of social justice twinkies i've been sitting here doing my work be on dagobah social justice twinkies oh god speaking of which pogue alert pogue alert or as else I've heard them called, remps. Rear echelon motherfuckers. But you know what? Ring is a fucking m -m man compared to the social justice Twinkies of today. Holy shit. I'm old fashioned. I believe in the hard way teaches people to be strong. Safe spaces teach them to be sissies. <clears throat> <clears throat> I've always liked to try and do things the hard-er way. You've heard me talk about strange-er things. Well, I've always preferred the er of every... I've always preferred to err on the side of er, going further. Training. Let's talk about training. I never had to train. I've been a, a jogging maniac my whole life because I believed in self-improvement. And way back in the day, you know, um, let me tell you about Shy Shy Beach. Back in the day, around the time of this movie, actually, my family would take these uh, camping trips, the hiking slash camping trips to uh, the northwest, uh, the uppermost north, uh, barring Alaska. The uppermost northwest uh, tip of the United States, uh, here in Washington State, known as Shy Shy Beach. We'd hike in and then we'd camp for a few days. And I wore military BDUs I'd get at the local surplus store. Not one of the local pawn shops in town, but, you know, legit surplus store. And I would, uh, we hiked in and I, I liked, I liked life being tough. Because I knew it benefited me. Or it benefit me. It, it toughened me up. Unlike playing sick from school and having excuses. No, no. My parents didn't need me to think I was sick from school. I just said, I'm pissed off. I'm not going to school today, basically. You want me to play sick? And they're like, no, we understand. Fuck's, <laughs> fuck the establishment. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. I always prefer the, the realistic way. And training. And this was a good part of it. A lot of this movie inspired me in my youth. Fucking back in the late 80s, early 90s, I'd go jogging through daybreak from like 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. watching the sunrise. And then later on, like in Hollywood, the social justice Twinkie Zoe Feist types claimed that I just had a magical body type. And no, I worked hard for it, motherfuckers.
unless you want to get into Matachlorians and the Montauk Project. <sighs> I earned it. Movies like this inspired me to get my ass out there at 4 a.m. Not for a paper route I was getting paid for, but to just jog my ass for miles and miles watching the sunrise. I know, maybe it's too many movies. Uh, and having never served, but short of, uh, you know, <clears throat> having been there, this sort of training with Gunny Highway and the bullets and what they're complaining about, I agree with. It hardens you. Military or otherwise, I believe in doing things the hard way. The high way. Because that's how life is. <coughs> Improvise, adapt, overcome. It's good wisdom for life. <sighs> you get them from these tough old guys. Especially from what I understand, the Korean and Vietnam guys. They were especially hard. And you can't really blame them. I mean, World War II was a noble war. Or at least so people saw it in history books, chronicle it. But uh, Korea and... Nam, the warriors didn't believe in the war then. It was just hell. And so they had to become hell themselves to survive it. Becoming cunning and brutal like Highway here. Cunning, fighting, tactics. Drinking, drugs, nastiness. And PTS. You know, back in World War II, Patton had to apologize for a few slaps and and, but in Highway's time, people fucking spit on you. Called you baby killer and all kinds of vile crap, Rambo. It's like defund the police today. So it made for the nastiest, most dangerous generation of military and living memory. <sighs> Which I like. An old saying. There's no substitute for old age and cunning. I want to tell you about Jim DeVore. Let me, t let me tell you about Drill Sergeant DeVore. High school, gym class. DeVore, now he was no highway. He looked more like Gandhi. A little guy with, uh, uh, bald with glasses and mustache and all. But with muscles, man. I come in at 7 a.m. before first period and he's already there benching 300, repping 300. God, it feels so good to get that cholesterol out of my system. Fucking DeVore, man. And he was a veteran of both Korea and Nam, just like Highway. And he was a former Marine DI, just like Highway. Oh, I loved it. He didn't take shit from any jocks, the football team. But he liked me, because I worked hard. I was more like Lieutenant Ring. He graded you on improvement. Start of the semester... He had everyone max their bench, and then he said, okay, now every month I want to see a 10% increase. I ended up getting an A+, plus because I doubled my bench in five months. The jocks, they got like B's and C's, because they were like recon here, the, all showing off. Set the bar too high for themselves, you know. Let's smoke this sucker. <laughs> I loved DeVore because he was old school and I knew I had learned a lot from him. Unlike, say, the other gym instructor they had at the time, we called him Low Profit Bob. His name was Bob and we called him Low Profit Bob. He'd sell like cheap steroids to the football players so they could make the, the King Bowl. And that's how they won state that year. Curtis High School, Tacoma, Washington, early 90s. Yeah, fuck you. Bob, low profit Bob got artificial results. DeVore got genuine, life lasting results. The two weeks he took over the wrestling team, they fucking won every match. Learn from your elders. They fought shit you can't imagine. They've taken the shadows of Plato's cave and made them retreat. No, fuck that. They took, it's like the, the old shirt uh, I've seen Marines don't die, they just go to hell to regroup. They fucking took over Plato's cave. Motherfuckers! Yeah! 
<clears throat> I said don't give the prick the satisfaction, sir. God damn right. Amen to that. That is some hardcore wisdom I've lived by ever since I first saw this movie. First few hundred times, anyway, back in the 80s. When I was a teenager going through Jim DeVore's class and learning life lessons, going through puberty and worshiping my brother. You know, Darren, if you hear this, I don't think you realize how much I looked up to you and modeled my life after you, wanted to believe in you like my drill instructor. But you... I guess you didn't want that. Well, the young cub learned his lessons. I've gone on through my own hell, done my tours of duty in Hollywood and other places. The wars of life. And... I'm glad I grew up with icons that taught me not to take any shit. Something the commies don't want no more from the military or from Hollywood. They don't want people that don't take any shit. Well, I... Too bad I grew up with Clint Eastwood. Well, but they think they can just call out the Swede. Swede, Swede, Swede. You mean... Uh, fucking Brock Lesnar here. <laughs> no, actually, this is more Jim DeVore. Gunnery Hi Sergeant Highway, that is. To tell you a story. I wasn't there, but Darren was. It was the last day of school. I was still in junior high. I hadn't moved up to Curtis High School with DeVore yet, but... Hit the road, Jack. Yeah, highway. Hit the road. Ah, ah, get it? Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, anyway. <clears throat> Last day of high school. Darren is sitting in the back of study hall. Jim DeVore's up at the head of class with his 30-year-old eraser that's hard as a rock, just doing his test papers and shit. And Darren watched all these different, these guys come in, these jocks. These young, tough guys, recon platoon kind of guys here. Stitt Jones and company came in. And they slowly f surrounded DeVore. And Darren looked up, and he's like, what's going to happen? He just watched it happen. Like, if you can see a car wreck coming, and you just watch it. You see a plane going down, and you just watch it. You see all these guys circling DeVore, and you just watch it. And then suddenly they all said, get him! And then all, I think he said there were seven guys there, seven 18-year-olds, jocks and uh, such, and tough guys. And they all fucking grabbed DeVore. They all pulled a Swede moment on him. It makes you wonder about the tough guy recon platoon. You couldn't have all ganged up on him? You had to wait for Swede? <laughs> well, this is what happens when y'all gang up on him. They all grabbed a limb. You know, one guy grabbed, two guys gra each grabbed an arm, two guys each grabbed a leg, one guy grabbed the waist, one guy grabbed the neck. They all had this thought out, and one guy was the leader. Well, I'm going to rip your head off and shit down your neck. Yeah, okay, whatever. If Darren said he couldn't describe what happened, but a, a moment later, DeVore had thrown all these guys off of him. He beat their asses, and, what, and they like the, the recon platoon, they all belt it for the door. They couldn't get out the study hall fast enough. <laughs> <clears throat> no substitute for old age and cunning. Or another saying... Beware an old man in a business where people die young. <laughs> yeah, he showed their asses that day. Uh, I wonder if he read magazines. No, actually, if you ask DeVore about his love life, he said that he was uh, married to a 99-year-old hag and lived in a drafty shack. 
truth is his wife was gorgeous and he had like millions of dollars in the stock market and shit and he still only slept like three hours a night not because he didn't need not because of stress but because he was in such good shape his body was so healthy that he didn't need the sleep <clears throat> Fucking a. that's an inspiration to have when you're 16 17 18 you know, even before that, because my brother hyped him up. Uh, now, uh, back to uh, Swede for a moment. So much I got to say there in such a short scene. Came and went so fast for all the hype, huh? I'm going to rip your head off and shit down your neck. I always thought that was kind of a clever, dumb thing that Eastwood did on purpose. Um, let me explain here. Because Swede has to be a big stupid, it's a line we've heard before. Uh, the, the Dr. Detroit with Dan Aykroyd used it three years earlier. A line we've heard before versus Highway's very colorful, inventive, genuine drill sergeant profanity. Well, to a kid, well, to anyone really, because humans never stop being childish, when you're insulting someone... The more creative, the better. If you use someone else's insult, you've lost. So, I thought that Clint Eastwood was like, Oh, Dr. Detroit, everyone will know this is a line someone else has used. Swede's a big stupid. I thought he was doing that in a very subtle, clever way. <clears throat> I, I, I don't know if he didn't. Or if he did. No, nah, maybe... Clint Eastwood likes Dr. Detroit, I don't know. Anyway, I thought that was clever. And so much going on. So much going on alchemically, so much going on culturally in Clint's movies. And, well, like I'm a conspiracist, and I can't help slipping into that from time to time, an old conspiracy war horse. Clint, I don't think, can help, or why should he stray from doing a Western? This movie... If you think about it, in a way, is is actually also a western. It's not just a military movie; it's a western. It's not just a movie about life; it's a western. I mean, Clint loves his westerns, yeah. Um, but in the western sense, uh, think about it. Clint Eastwood is, as ever, he's the stranger come to town, um, the lone badass. The new sheriff. Gonna get these cowboys in line. And Major Powers is like the corrupt old sheriff. Or maybe the evil landowner. Running off the natives and such. It actually works very well. The western template and modern military setting. Nice piece of cinematic art there, Clint. Leave it to Clint Eastwood. A true American legend. To make art out of two distinctly different uh, two distinctly different but simultaneously the same American cultures of guns <laughs> he makes cinematic art out of cowboys and G.I. Joe yo Clint let's go oh, I love the booby trap scene here did he set that? sure he did teach him to think Hey, Mario, you like to wear that hat. Make America think again. It's a good thing to think about. This is me teaching role-playing games. You know, unorthodox. Make people think. Don't just play the video game. That's why I never liked video games. More beyond the 80s, when they were crude and you had to improvise, adapt, overcome the limitations of the game with your imagination. As Rambo says, the mind is the best weapon. No shit. I, uh... Once the video games became to tell you the whole story and there's nothing left to your imagination, I didn't like them. The, all the shoot 'em up simulators from, from the late 90s onward. Now, I need a shoot 'em up simulator. I just do this. <laughs> they come from a higher position. They're... They know things the others don't know. They can't see the forest for the trees. 
They thought differently outside the box, and they won. This is how America survived the British. <laughs> how we allegedly defeat the Empire. We persevered, and we just thought outside the box. If we went head-to-head -head with them, by the rules of engagement at the time, we would have lost. There would have been no America. No Marine Corps, nothing. <laughs> Think. I know in the military you're told to follow orders, but you're also told to disobey immoral orders. In other words, think. <clears throat> orders is good. I understand orders. I understand efficiency. I also understand when people sit around questioning, why, why, why? Oh, we just lost. Yes, orders are important, but at the same time, you get dipshits like major powers who politically work their way up and they're not deserving to be there. And they fuck it, they give the wrong orders. And as Gunny Highway says here, you, we go into combat tomorrow, you'll plant half those men. In other words, you're system sucks it's not up to par it's not up to the competition with reality the re with the rest of reality get with the picture motherfucker that's what we're in business for in the military we're here to be the most efficient possible and you're only being the most efficient for your facebook at the time it reminds me of so many grand masters of washington state lodge it's all about their ego and not getting the fucking job done or people in Hollywood. Oh, geez. Don't ever let... If you... Anyone of a higher pay grade in Hollywood, it's their idea, not yours. Or you're done. And why do you think Hollywood sucks so much? Or anything. You've been in the corporate environment. It's not just the military. Remember, this is a, a story about life. And people that have been through hard experience know better than we do. should listen to them. Respect your elders, unless they're senile old crazy communists like creepy Uncle Joe or nasty Nazi palooser or the Clintons or people like that. No, don't listen to them. You know why? Because they're civilians and they're talking shit about a place they haven't been. Hillary, I, I survived gunfire on the tarmac. Fuck you. I started this commentary with, I haven't been in the military, I have no right to say anything. And if I was in a hot LZ, if I was in a combat situation and there was a military buddy with me, I'd be glad he was there and I'd say, what the fuck do we do? Because I don't know. You take charge, you take point, or you, you're you in command, whatever. I would equally uh, ask if, when it comes to Hollywood conspiracies and commentaries, that people listen to me, because I've been there. That's my heartbreak ridge. The Hollywood sign, that's my heartbreak ridge. Oh, I think that was the highlight of the commentary. Glad I'm doing it, drinking at the bar with the brothers in arms. <laughs> respect. Just drinking to Respect. And the memories, the hardships, the scars, not just on the face, but on the heart, heartbreak that come with it, where you get the right to talk about it. People think they got the right to talk about shit because they got an opinion. Maybe you do, but the person that's been there and bled for it has a lot more right to talk about it than you do. <clears throat> it's not an equal right to talk. It's a right to talk, but not an equal right to talk. People that have been there have a bit more right than you do respect them or don't expect anyone to respect you or your opinion asshole honor goes both ways if you don't earn it you don't and you have to earn it first before you expect it from others same with respect earn it first then you can ask it of others you're trying to get them all respectful to you for what that's all externalism. That's gold chains. Notice Mar um, Stitch ain't wearing them now. You know, we're definitely all wearing the same t-shirts here. And that's why. See, that's why I respect orders. We gotta be efficient. We gotta get it done. But also why you buck the system. And Okay, you got your rifle. You got your boots. You can walk into combat. Let's go. And this 
new military bullshit. But the people that haven't been there and bled there, writing the rules. Fucking Vince Russo writing wrestling. You haven't been in the ring? What the hell are you doing? <clears throat> Or uh, anyone in D.C. these days. <laughs> uh, we have so many major powers that shouldn't be in D.C., don't we? You want to make that a 51st state, Mario? <sighs> mm, it's a state of mind. You know, they should be separate. Federal power should be separate from the sovereign, every man. They shouldn't be seen as equal. They should be serving us, not we serving them. And then they'll go with the, get rid of the, uh, no, then they'll want to keep the electoral, because they'll have them all. Yeah, we don't need a new London. That's what we got away from. Uh, but what the hell, between Hollywood and the District of Criminals and the whole military-industrial entertainment complex and why I've got to fight the battles of these commentaries digging into my heartbreak ridge of Hollywood here, your whole world, the situation you know right now, you know what it is? <clears throat> What's your assessment of this alert? It's a clusterfuck. That's exactly what the fuck it is. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> You tell them, Gunny Highway. They speak through these commentaries. <clears throat> it's what I do. It's the way I fight the battle. You know, Lieutenant Ring may not know, but he's willing to learn and he becomes better. Versus Colonel... Or, I'm sorry, major powers being a complete douchebag here. Just wanted it all about himself. Or maybe Gunny Clint Hi uh, Thomas Highway Eastwood here, who was assigned to be a lifeguard in Korea, but he could have faced uh, the battle. He served in a different way. And because he didn't do battle, what does he do? He goes on to make movies like Heartbreak Ridge that inspire a lot of people to join the Corps. And or in you know fight the war in other ways. We can't all be on the front line. We can't all be recon platoon. Some of us have to be the pogues and the remps or whatever. I like to think uh, I'm a little bit better than that, but I'm fighting the war in my own way. I'm supplying the sold the, the marines with. The intel, the enemy's location, their movements. Here, here's where they've got, you know, here's how you get behind their lines. Here's where their ammo depot is. Here's how Hollywood thinks and works. Here's the good guys from the bad guys. Here's hostile territory where you're likely to encounter heavy resistance. Here's, you know, friendly territory. Clint Eastwood is friendly territory. Mario Van Peebles is friendly territory. Even if he doesn't agree with me totally, like about DC and such, he means well, and he can learn. He's open-minded. Um, he's not just my religion, my way, or the highway. Like these two guys coming to understand each other midway through the movie now. There's highway still hard and stitch is still stitch, but... They're coming to respect each other. Even if he's still giving them the tough lessons. <laughs> the ultimate warrior lessons. There was, a, I remember a story, a, a video I saw a couple, many, many years ago before Warrior's uh, Destiny. There was a couple guys that went to, actually got permission to go visit Ultimate Warrior on his, like his ranch. And he talked to him doing an interview for their podcast or whatever. And one of them made the stupid fucking... Con they did a major powers and asked if Warrior could give him like a reference on their resume. And Warrior 
right there. He's like, let's go for a little ride. And he took him out into the Arizona desert. And he made him get out of his car. And then he drove off and made him walk home. <laughs> I love that. Uh, well, Warrior's one of my inspirations. Living or dead, like Clint Eastwood, one of those old warriors that teach you how to deal with life. Respect. Fascinated by those sorts of people. So they're very empowering. You know, you soy boys grow up with your Jedi, but is that like your politics where it's just empty rhetoric and you don't really mean it? Why wouldn't you want to live it for real? No, the force isn't real. Oh, ye of little faith. You just haven't had the balls to go there. You ain't growing up with enough gunny highway. To dare to look over the next horizon, to follow that road wherever it goes. How does the song go? Uh, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. We will fight our country's battles in the air, on land, and sea. Wherever we can take a gun. <laughs> if the army and the navy ever looked on heaven's sea, they will find the streets are guarded by United States Marines. Hoorah! For all Marines out there, anyone in the services listening to this, I love that you guys and gals are there and you got our backs. I understand that. My family was military. Both my grandfathers served in World War II. My brother joined. I grew up with G.I. Joe, you know. And Jessica, my Addie here, my Aggie, she, her father, I'm sorry, her grandfather was a Pearl Harbor veteran, OG. He was there that fateful day. He survived it. Then he fell in love with Japan. Hence the nickname OG wasn't his real name. I got the honor to meet him before he passed in 2003. Showed me his medals. Showed me his, uh... He had a piece of the Arizona in a little box. Thought that was very cool. Respect what people have gone through. With the military and war, it's very easy to see. And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying, how can you not see it? Oh, their love triangle going on here. I'm not changing tactics on you, Jessica. I'm just being the honest old grisly, hardcore conspiracy war horse I always have been telling you about the new world. I warned Jessica about the sex cults before she got sucked into them. I made her watch, you know, we were watching DC Animated Universe with Batman and Alfred was getting sucked into a cult and I'm like, watch out for these friends of ours, Jessica. These weird seminars they want us to go to here in Los Angeles, you fucking weirdos. And it didn't matter. I tried to warn her and she just... Black, white, red, gold with a little bit of blue. Guess you gotta have blue jeans. Mason's gotta have his proper blue for initiations. <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck it. This one actually is fizzing. <laughs> How many beers I got here? I don't care. I'm lovely drunk. What was I talking about? I don't care anymore. I think I covered everything. And now we're back. We're back with Stitch Jones. 
<laughs> you know, why didn't Mario Van Peebles get an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor? And he's really the life of the movie here. I think people should totally stitch Jones the Oscars. Hey, hey, as long as his good friend, Chris Rock, is going to do the pro wrestling at the Oscars with Will Commie Smith, why not set up like a Stitch Jones, we're going to have a little vote kind of moment. <laughs> Would have been a lot better than the slap over racism bullshit. Yeah, I mean, what do I know? <coughs> Just don't bore me. Yeah. That's me. With life. That's why I go to Hollywood. That's why I joined the Masons. That's why I put my ass on the lines with commentaries and name names. Others don't dare. That's why I don't give a fuck about like shares and subscribes and going on the the conspiracy talk so, show circuit that's old hat it's well trodden territory it's a but mutual admiration society that's why i like to get fucking plastered and i've got a great buzz going on right now we're gonna make it worse or i just like to get totally fucking in an altered state and say here's the truth motherfuckers hardcore Semper Fi, Conspiracy, Do or Die, I Don't Theorize, I, <sighs> Theology I Realize by Living in, that coffee or Jack, I'm not sure, I don't care, oh wait, we're putting people back together, okay. I'll leave that to Doc Brown for a while. It gets better. You know, whiskey people tell you, or booze people tell you that the different shaped glasses affect the taste. Well, so does time and energy. You never considered that, didn't you? <clears throat> Let that power up for a bit. It'll be, more, it'll be stronger when I take it. Oh, yeah. Spirit's more booze than bud here. And that gets the spirits in, the emotions going crazy. The PTS not having the shields of Mary. Mary Jane puts me back together, but Jack has a way of jacking off my PTS. And Well, let me just summarize this scene in a word. Jessica. Now let me be a irresponsible drunk and go on and on and on. I uh, know I put you through hell. I'm not a Marine, but I... Well, you all know about the cult Hollywood now. Imagine what... Wet behind the ears, living in his mommy's basement, Matt DeMille learned in 2008 when you're the blood prince of Hollywood. Come to this party. Ever see Eyes Wide Shut? Okay, there, we're done. I let you slap me, Jessica. I let you hurt me. I let you give me the dollar a stroke and stick a sword in my soul. As I know, what you went through was horrible. And a warrior takes the pain, not the lady. And Clint Eastwood is one of the reasons I did what I did. You know, since they're talking history, I need to talk some history to distract myself. Woo, wee, woo, woo. Um, back to Stitch Jones here. He didn't get a Best Supporting Actor award for this, which he should have. If there was any legitimacy to those fucking things. 
Uh, but, but who did win for 1986? Ah, uh, ha. Michael Caine. For Hannah and her sisters. What? Yeah, that's what I said. A movie absolutely nobody remembers or cares about in any significant way. Nothing against Michael Caine. Brother Peachy, I just did commentary for The Man Who Would Be King. Esoteric version. My second commentary on that movie after six years. And Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. And so I love Michael Caine, but... Hannah and her sisters? <laughs> Whereas uh, Mario here, in real life, quotes a lot of Masons. He quotes Kipling and Twain. Rudyard Kipling, the man who would be king. Mark Twain, who shares my sentiments about Zoe Feist. <laughs> to quote Brother Mark Twain, I've never, I don't wish death on anyone, but I've read some obituaries with great pleasure. Anyway, Mario, smart guy. So where's his award? Fuckers. Oh, God, I'm back at the Grand Lodge. Hi, hey, Brother Jim. I don't know what it's like to be discriminated against, huh? But you all want to go along to get along with communism. So much for your oaths. And Brother John. And Brother Chris. You fucks. No, you're not even brothers. You broke your oaths. You're traitors and murderers. You broke in the third degree and the 33rd. I think I'll have that shot now, Swede. Brock. <laughs> Jessica. And I were there for when Brock fell on his fucking head. <sighs> WrestleMania 19. <laughs> Seattle. Jessica and I were floor seats. <laughs> and hey, when brother Bruce Pritchard lies and says that Kurt Angle and Brock didn't go to the hospital that night, my brother, who did do this stuff, he did his airborne stuff in 1989, 90. He was working as an EMT at Harborview that night. Brock Lesnar showed up all fucked up. <laughs> we're still in the parking garage Jessica and I and our friend Matt leaving the uh, uh, the parking garage and on my cell phone and Darren's like did Brock f get fucked up tonight he's, he's here right now at Harborview and he's all fucked up notice the recon platoon run uphill they're ascending they're learning they're becoming better men. Woo! Notice Stitch Jones was first. Stitch Jones was first. I could hear Jim Ross calling now. Stitch Jones was first. Stitch Jones was first. Stitch Jones was first. It's like Shawn Michaels with only one f foot hit the floor. Stitch Jones was first. Motherfuckers. Mmm. <clears throat> Matcha. Yeah. <laughs> Time for a battle royal. <laughs> oh, I love this scene. And I hate this scene. This scene is so good, but it's over too quick. Uh, funny, though. You know, Clint Eastwood, he's being a lifeguard up there again, just like in Korea. And 
the military giving him shit. Oh, yeah, you're, Kore- you're playing a Korean vet, but you, you're you only a lifeguard in Korea. It's not like he chose the assignment. At least he loves the military and is all positive and promotional of them. You know, what more do you want? I mean, do you have to be a veteran to play a veteran? What the fuck's next? You gotta... You can't portray the president in a movie if you've never been president in real life. That's fucking stupid. Clint Eastwood loves the military. You know, Clint Eastwood would have made a great president. He's a bit too old now, but wow, if only he had run. and Well, he would have run afoul of the Trump stigma. They would have shut him down. And Yeah, sad truth, but... Oh, well, back to the Battle Rumble Royale. Kind of sad we don't get any real spots here. Oh, we get Stitch Jones, but we don't get, like, you know, Swede should have had a moment in there, but this isn't about Swede. It's, it's about Highway. All these great characters really don't get much play, but they don't need to. They're colorful background for the journey of Highway. The color of life. I mean, I wish there had been more done with all these supporting characters, but really that's life, isn't it? Don't we really wish uh, more out of those people that came and went along our journey? Ah, well, it's a great scene nonetheless. But I love it and I hate it. I never quite liked this part, really. (laughs) This is a babyface move by Powers. That he volunteered to fight Highway. Should have been... Should have been the umpire. Um, been the one to have Major Powers compete. Like... Since you're, since you're leading Webster's team... As your umpire... I am ordering you to... Uh, <laughs> That would have been better, but I'm only nitpicking here. If a movie is a classic, great movie, the best you can do is nitpick. Nothing's ever perfect. There's always another Horace line, but... I have a philosophy. If the best you can do with a movie is nitpick, then it's as close to great, perfect as it can be. This fight could have been a bit better, could have been dragged out a bit, but... You know, maybe that's for the best. If this movie were made today... This scene would have gone on for 20, 30 minutes with all kinds of character moments and wrestling spots and 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 Brock uh, Swede would have done things and, and Highway's story would have been lost in the spectacle. It would have been like Bilbo in the Hobbit movies. It would, as it is, as this classic film is, we get it we got it we got the story of the scene and we got the memories we got the truth we got the life lesson from it so it's it's a great scene i'd have preferred it gone on a little longer but you know clint eastwood movies stay with you you remember the movie afterwards you see it more after the credits clint's movies are very much life lessons they're like marine corps training you don't quite get it while you're in it but later on the wisdom is there with you whenever you need it The training kicks in. Clint Eastwood's movies leave you with good wisdom for life. (laughs) Even if the scene is a little rushed. Like like training. (laughs) Uh, I love this uh, story arc. How they're all coming together now. Now they respect him. Now they're talking. Used to be talking shit about him. Wait till he meets the Swede. Now they're talking about he won the Congressional Medal of Honor at Heartbreak Ridge. I love how Highway's got their respect now. And in comes 
the old base thinkers that got to keep things the way it was. Static, unchanging, unnatural. I mean, Stitch Jones is an authority on making love. Nothing's more natural than that. These people want things to be so rigid and so unchanging, there's no point. What are we fighting for freedom for if nobody has it? God, look at his eyes. He looks like a snake, doesn't he? Shifty bastard. And I like how they all say, no habla inglés. We're not understand we we do no compliance with your bullshit highway has taught these people these young cubs respect it's a, such a good movie it wears on you and you were even before weed and booze and all the rest when i was an impressionable teenager in the early 90s and i'm watching this at three in the morning while my brother and friar sir dano the purple knight are finishing up my game mastering them through ruins of adventure pool of radiance advanced dungeons and dragons in my own way where they invent the log charge with gron that peter jackson would psychically uh, rip off 20 years later um they're finishing up the adventure, and I'm going jogging at 4 a.m. Dano, Mr. Military Family, uh, he went with me, and he's like, a mile and a, a 1.7 uphill? Now what? Now we go downhill. Oh, good. Now what? Now we go back uphill, 1.7 miles again. What? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Dan, when he first showed up at my parents' house, 7th grade, age 13, 1987, my parents were one of those classic 80s uh, uh, recreation room, rec rooms. They had a bar. And Dan and were what, like playing Nintendo, watching Predator, and he's like, what's this? Oh, booze. His family had just come from being stationed in Germany. So he just grabbed and drank, and there's woo! Playing Nintendo Contra with Dano in those days was fun. Whoa, I think I almost overflowed the shot glass there with that one. <laughs> oh. Never snarkle suckled Jack. That was weird. Uh, what else we got at this bar? Loch Ness Monster Fizzy Juice. Excellent. Oh, I am getting totally trashed. I can't do the finale of Heartbreak Ridge without being drunk as a skunk like Gunny Highway would. Oh, he'd probably say be sober going into battle. But come on, Gunny. Who are you trying to bullshit this time? <laughs> Whoops. Spilled a little there. One day, Jessica, I would like to dance with you. Before I go off to deal with the Sith Lords of Hollywood and the Banksters and the New World Order. Luke would like one last party, one last private moment with Jessica and Endor before I have to go surrender to Vader. <laughs> all these commentaries are part of that training for everyone what it means in the future now what it means for this movie it's nice that he gets his house in order everything is resolved really the movie could end here you could roll credits right here and it would be an excellent movie and would even fill the running time quota the studio would expect we're at 94 95 minutes but even though it's titled Heartbreak Ridge, which is a little weird because the finale is in Grenada, well, that was contemporary for the time. And it's really the same. Just like with life, the old lion teaching the young cubs and the cycles of life. Grenada, Korea, 
It's all the same. Military, industrial, complex bullshit. And we are the profane that believe in it. Unless Gunnery Sergeant Modern Macho Moses Highway is going to come along and teach you how it really works. Fuck the world and its cycles of bullshit. They'll always go on. But what about your story? The cycles of tyranny and bullshit will continue endlessly. They've been around for thousands of years. They will never change their human nature. It's why our souls incarnate and come into this world almost like Everything in heaven is training. It's this movie up to this point. But when we incarnate into this world, it's, we're going to war. It's time to live it for real. I think this is why our souls incarnate. I really do. Nothing is ever perfect. Nothing is ever finished. There's always another Horus line. We're here to our souls, our consciousness to learn. You're never going to master the world exoterically. You're never going to make a paradise, a utopia. That's bullshit. Orgy of the Golden Calf shit. It's not about the story out there. It's about your story in here. Don't try to master the world. Try to be self-mastered. That you can succeed at. Try or tr Do or do not, there is no try. Master Highway Yoda man. The world's wars will come and go. There will always be profane arguing over bullshit. What you need to do is master yourself. Coming of age stories. You know, this movie is like a campfire story where the old shaman is imparting to the young cubs what is... Be prepared for what lies ahead. Overcome it. Adapt. Improvise. Think for yourself. <sighs> Vroom. Play with your G.I. Joe toys. Don't be afraid to believe in patriotism. You gotta believe in something. Be aware of thy enemy, foreign and domestic. Um... A key, Colonel Aquino and company, New World Order bullshit. But there's nothing wrong with believing in... In fact, there's everything right with believing in a cause. It's too easy to follow a flag, especially if a false flag, and believe it's a noble cause when it's not. I mean, Vietnam, our boys are floating in the water. Yeah, after Admiral Morrison totally Darth Vadered the situation and Jim Morrison was in Hollywood mind-controlling the masses, being an unwitting dupe in the military-industrial entertainment complex, sure. But what if... It, well, it's, I'm not going to participate. Well, then darkness encompasses the world. You have to fight, but like any good battle, noble battle, you got to pick your battles. Any good noble war, you gotta pick your battles. Pick your spots to dump your bong and make it sync with the movie. <laughs> yeah, this is like Clint going down off of uh, California, or it was California at the time. Amaruka, the feathered serpent. That's a whole other story. Anyway, uh, you know, now I've got a little time here. There's not much to talk about for the rest of the movie other than boom, boom, boom. So I got a time. I got a little time to expound on some things I mentioned earlier. Let's start with Clint Eastwood. Why not? Yeah, back in um, during the Korean War, he uh, was stationed in Com in California, and then he went up to uh, on leave to visit his family up here in my backyard jblm joint base lewis mccord he couldn't get a flight back so he stuffed himself into a fucking 
cargo compartment of a one-person plane, which went down. What? <sighs> Lifeguard that he was, he knew how to swim. But more importantly, in fact, of infinite difference of importance. He kept his head. He's two, one to two miles from shore. He doesn't know where shore is, which direction it is. It's in the middle of the night. He's in the middle of the ocean. He's in shark-infested waters. And what does he do? Fucking goes full Clint Eastwood. I'm just going to pick a direction and swim, motherfucker. And he made it. He made land. Obviously, because he's still here with us. But what a fucking badass. Clint, you got my respect. Whether you saw action officially in the military or not. It's like Aragorn said to Arwen. There will come time for valor that is not renowned or shared by the bards. But does that make it any less virtuous? Aowen, you know, you don't need glory. You need purpose. You need truth. I've fought so many battles and suffered so much that nobody ever knows about. Virtue is its own reward. You have to be confident in yourself of that. If you need medals on your chest or you need pins on your lapel, Brother Masons, you've totally lost your way. You can't see the forest for the trees. You're already dead. <sighs> Takes his smoky. <laughs> I know he ain't lighting it yet, but he symbolically got it, and that's what matters in the lodge, right? <laughs> ah, welcome to Granada, 1983. Well, I was going through Stranger Things, and all this shit was going on. For real. This is actually... Okay, it's not Heartbreak Ridge, but it is. Makes me wonder if the title of this movie... It's inter Why isn't the title of this movie Granada or something? Because that's really what it is. It's not Heartbreak Ridge. Except in spirit. Where it counts. This is Heartbreak Ridge transplanted to the modern times. And this is pretty real. I mean, sure, it's a movie. It's a somewhat fictionalized version of what really happened. But uh, this is pretty much what happened. A lot of the reality was put into this movie. From the uh, Stitch Jones with his credit card later, that was real. To the bulldozer right here. This, this is based on a real incident. This is history. It's dramatized. It's a movie, but it's still history. You can't rely on the movie to tell you history. That's just like te the priesthood telling you who to crusade or jihad against. Enjoy the dramatization, enjoy the theater, but still think for yourself. Oh, Swede with an M60. G.I. Joe. Yo, Joe. Oh, fuck. Why didn't we ever get a real G.I. Joe movie? Fuck. Why the fuck didn't we get Heartbreak Ridge toy line? I would have totally bought the plastic uh, bulldozer with Stitch Jones action figure, man. That would have been awesome. Especially if it played music. Imagine when you activated, you put in the batteries not included, but you activated the G.I. Joe vehicle that came with the Stitch, the bulldozer that came with Stitch G.I. Jones. And you, like, once you hit the little switch on and it, it played Stitch Jones music. I would have totally bought that fucking, you'd see it on eBay now for 10,000 fucking dollars. And this is based on a real thing that happened in Grenada. That's fucking awesome. And it's like Stallone with the Rambo 4 with Burma, you know, basing on real shit. Or Rambo 3 with Afghanistan. Oh, wait, wasn't that Bin Laden? <laughs> Whoops. But, yeah, no knock on Stallone and company. Every, there's always another Horace line. 
there's always another bridge to cross you know there's always more to learn what matters is that you're you don't judge other people unless you have no choice like they're shooting at you I like how they show scenes in this of the young tough guys the young, you know learning the value of, they kill people and they're like holy shit I've killed someone reminds me of a uh, road dog Jesse James in WWF in the late 90s you know he was a tanker in the first Gulf police action and he killed three people and he was like that haunted me forever I've killed more than three and I'm pissed off and crazy but whatever it should haunt you right here what he's talking about right here but you know information balance comes with it book of Luke Skywalker even Jesus said at one point, sell your cloak and buy a sword. Even Jesus knows sometimes you have to kick some ass. Sometimes you have to kick some ass, and even the Prince of Peace will back that up. Because that's part of human nature. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the law of the jungle. If you can't accept that, you fucking made your powers. And it shouldn't be. Welcome to the Department of Anatomy. <laughs> Interesting choice of words. And St. George's Medical School. Ah, yeah, well, that's real, but it's also real interesting that they're ascending steps while they're at St. George's. You know, St. George, Slayer of the Dragon, base thinking. Also... I took a cruise through Google Earth earlier, and uh, running through St. George's uh, campus, or town, really, so, you know, every university has to have a supporting, whoops, ba 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 pow pow uh, town, running through town is uh, St. John's River. It's a Masonic thing. Holy St. John's of Jerusalem, Gunny Highway. Matt Man, Tom Cruise wannabe, but Stitch Jones, yeah, Tom Cruise wannabe him. Hey, ma'am, didn't you know there was a police action going on? <laughs> United States Marines, yes, that's what you like to hear. The place, the area is secured. It's party time. Get the fuck out of here. Time to unass the area. <clears throat> Where's Colonel Powers taking his fucking photo ops? I know he's around here somewhere. I can smell him. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> With his camera. His gold chains is his fucking ass Facebook ego sent. I like how when he first met Gunny Highway, he called him an egocentric son of a bitch. Yeah, who's the one with the fucking camera? Holy shit. If ass Facebook and anti-social media existed in 1980, exist in 1986. You know, powers would have been all over that. There's the Grand Lodge, the Ghost Lodge of Washington for you. You know, there's no Masons in Washington State except myself, technically. They've all submit to the enemy. But I'm like Gunny Highway because I grew up with this shit. And maybe I'm crazy, but I still believe in the crazy. I, I take the fantasy and I go with it. I'm like General Patton. I'm going to fucking believe in the fantastic and I'm going to achieve it too. Motherfuckers. Base stinkers. And notice how the students are a nice little rainbow of color and they get out of there. Notice also how the finale, the finale of the film, the lesson of life is taking a hill. The unfinished pyramid, the pyre mine, the illuminated mountain by any other name. They got to deal with the ultimate base thinkers. 
The whole finale of the film is symbolic of the occult tradition. Take a, a hill. Ascend Mount Sinai. I like how he fights him with smoke. It's not an actual grenade. It's a smoke grenade. <laughs> and they take shelter in a lighthouse. A lighthouse. A symbol of knowledge and guidance. A pineal <coughs> gland. <coughs> Physicalized. Literalized, if there ever was one. Man, you know, this is the real G.I. Joe movie. We didn't need a G.I. Joe movie in, this, in the 80s because we had Heartbreak Ridge. I totally wish that G.I. Joe Has Hasbro should have made action figures. I would have totally bought the Stitch Jones action figure, both kinds, in his Marine gear and his Stitch Jones in his Rockstar gear. Highway, I mean, Gung Ho had his second wave weird blue uh, marine gear his blue camo but then he had wave six dress blues action figure <laughs> we could have had multiple gunny highway action figures man in korean and russian vehicles working for cobra i would have bought them all they would have fucking served cobra well don't tell me they wouldn't. Oh, profile's dead. Don't tell me he isn't. Well, some someone had to die or this wouldn't have been a war movie. you got to have that lesson of life. It's interesting, though, how quickly they brush past it, though. Clint Eastwood movies don't really focus. Even though they involve a lot of death, they don't focus on it. They don't take death for granted, but they don't dwell on it. They dwell, They focus on life. Which is fine. I think people that dwell on death too much are people that can't handle it, or they have no purpose in handling it. I have promises to keep. I have a mission to carry out. I gotta know the enemy. I gotta focus on their whereabouts, and I gotta get it done. In a way, I'm like, Highway, I like it, but it's all that I've known. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering, Jones. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Now, uh, alchemical colors. Jones is transforming. He's at the highest point. Stitch Jones is in the pineal position, baby. And he's talking about the Flintstones. The Flintstones are Freemasons. Friend Barney, Loyal Order Water Buffaloes. Even Weird Al sang a song about it. There's a secret handshake. Everybody got to know. Get out your Excalibur and cut your cable toe and do the base thinking you know. Stitch Jones is on it. He's already back. Yeah. Woo. He is the savior. He had his crucifix torn off, but he has become like Jesus and want to save everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody got a credit card? They won't, they won't pay collect calls. New beer stitches here, and I never go to combat without my plastic. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was great. Ah, uh, stitch you to man. What divided them in the beginning now saves all their asses in the end. And and again, this is based all based on reality. This actually happened. During the Grenada thing, they actually did make a collect call <laughs> to call in an airstrike. They improvised, they adapted, they overcame. That's goddamn right. Get shit done. How many Twinkies I've dealt with in my life that didn't want to get shit done because they've been indoctrinated to believe in the system and the status quo. Like the people, the beginning of Terry Gilliam's Brazil with, is this the man who single-handedly took out multiple uh, enemies and engaged many and uh, saved many men and have him executed at once? 
<laughs> you can't have this uh, example of demoralizing the other men. It sets a bad standard. No, you need more gunny highways that inspire you to... Even Lieutenant Ring, the fucking Pogue, lets, he finds his balls. He finds his inner mastery in the pineal position of the mountain of illumination. Let's do it. Damn right. Damn straight. Or as Dano used to say, hey, diddle diddle right up the middle. And then you get the uh, service of God here. <laughs> from the heavens heaven sent they made their connection to god and they got saved from above symbolically that's what's going on when you find when you ascend your inner mountain you raise yourself from the dead the truly dead that never th were thinking to begin with i'm just picturing mario van peoples with his red baseball cap make america think again going on and I I can't disagree and I love to agree with that it's all good except profiles dead but you know what that happens onward and upward excelsior onward and upward to greater glory <clears throat> and he knows that that's their time he's Gunny Highway has taught you well, Skywalker. He's in the rear now. The old dog, the old lions accepted, you know, the circle, the cycle of life. Up the street, up the highway. Now they're all got their own personal heartbreak ridge going on. And they have had their heart broken. They lost profile. But they still have to ascend. There's always another Horus line. There's always more to learn. I like how they go through the Arch of Stone. <laughs> Very Masonic. Even though this wasn't filmed in Grana Grenada, I think this was filmed elsewhere in the Caribbean, but there are old Spanish and other forts everywhere. But it's all about symbolical. It's all symbolic of ascension. To that summit where the light is you, what are you going to do? A saying I've liked to live by, more paranormal than anything, but it applies to life. Everything is power. Anything is possible. What will you do? What will you do with anything being possible? Hmm? With everything being power, what would you do with it? You've got to master yourself before you master others. Otherwise, you're... Just another beast, a base thinker. But they're ascending. They're gonna. They believe in a noble cause, and rescuing people is good. Even if America was illegally in Grenada, we technically invaded. But the proxy people that keep the big boys, the big dogs, from ever going to nuclear. The balance. It's not right. But that's just the way of things. The law of the jungle. Don't try and win the war. Find your own virtuous place in it. Rescue people. That's good. I hope none of this recon platoon ever runs for political office. Except for maybe Stitch Jones. Stitch Jones for president. Gunny Highway's too old, but Stitch Jones... Stitch Jones... Hey, Mario Van Peebles, why don't you run for president? <laughs> I might just vote for you. Depends on what you say about so many things, not just DC, but hey, why not? It's possible. People can change. I mean, look at Stitch Jones at the beginning of this movie and look at him now. He's a very different person. To his credit. And the wise old master on the mountaintop. The sage, the guru, the Jedi, the Yoda. <clears throat> For the Jedi, there is time to smoke as well.
Oh, the colonel powers that shouldn't be, or major powers that shouldn't be. You're, you have no place at the top of the mountain of illumination. You're a base thinker. Uh oh, don't bore him. Now, that's a fucking threat. You can rob me and you can rape me. Just don't bore me. <laughs> and so I feist you can whip me and beat me and cheat me. Just don't bore me. No one that betrayed me had any original reason for doing so. It was all orange man, bad, typical cancel culture. Fucking Nazis sent my family to the ovens because they were told to. If you're going to kill my family, at least kill them with some style, some originality. You know, otherwise I'm going to have to go full Tom, Matthew, Thomas, uh, Highway DeMille on your asses. Yeah, but that's the future. Right now I'm just training. There'll be deployment soon. Yeah, you tell him. The powers that shouldn't be. Get back down to base thinking. Get back down to supply. These people reached down, found their cojones, and ascended. They ascend. Fucking even ring. It's got bigger balls than you, powers. And that's the truth. Don't judge a book by its cover. Lieutenant Ring had it in him all along. I wonder if they're swapping spit in the showers. Who measures up? Not that that should matter too much. Matters, you know, the size of your dick don't matter is the size of your, or the strength of your soul. The length, the size of your spine. How strong is that? Forget getting your dick hard. How strong is your spine? I had no problem there, FYI, just saying. Why would I bring it up? Yeah. Anyway, back home, those who know more, coming back down to the grid. Um, but to a hero's welcome, which was very much a Reagan thing. Up until this point, all we had was Baby Raper. <laughs> Go watch Rambo again. As cartoony as Rambo movies became, the original First Blood, and to a certain extent First Blood Part Two, was greatly respected by the Vietnam vets because there were profound truths there of how fucked up it was and how fucked up it made, how, fu how it fucked up everybody that had to go through to survive war, you got to become war. Oh, what a base thinker! No, more demonic, unless you can be self-mastered and find a reason to live beyond it, which Gunny Highway does in this movie. It's a good story. It's like a fairy tale for the military. It's the even if it's not realistic per se, it's the sort of reality you might want. Because there's a happy ending to it. And you can make that for yourself. Well, yeah, most of the military people like this movie. You know, it's <clears throat> Recently, Clint Eastwood, 89 years old, went out revisited um, Camp Pendleton, where they filmed this. And people love this movie. It's inspiring. It's an American legend. It's great. It's not the shit we had back then when people spit on our troops and called them baby killers. Yeah, uh, first time. <laughs> this is a kind of a new thing. 
not, but not to over glorify because when you're just serving mercenary wars oh wait a minute post 9-11 world conspiracy is a thing Bilderberg is a thing Bush was had friends with the Hinckley family having dinner the day before Reagan was shot you would have had 9-11 10 years earlier if the bullet had been an inch closer but you have to master yourself and find your own way and believe in what you believe. I believe in America. I believe in the American dream. I believe in the concepts set down by the founding fathers, both brothers and others. Not only about a third of them were Masons, and I'm beyond that too. I'm like Gunning Highway when it comes to the Masons. I'll do what I gotta do in the name of the truth of my oaths and obligations. Highway took an oath to the Constitution, not to major fucking powers. Not even to the fucking president, but to the Constitution and the American dream. See that flag flying above him? Yeah. The secondary flag, anyway. It's all the same ideal. At least it doesn't have the Admiralty Gold Fringe of Britain on it. But freedom. To find your own highway to your own Horace line. Walk away from the grid. Take flight with your divine feminine now wearing white. Jessica Shmulavu My Heartbreak Ridge of Hollywood Hey, Clint wasn't in the military or he was in the military but he didn't see combat he certainly wasn't a uh, Korean veteran in that sense but he could make a movie about it and he's greatly loved for it including by myself. Fine. <clears throat> he can take a war and tell his story about it. I can take his story and t tell my own tale about that. And I gotta tell you, Clinton Company, you make awesome movies. Can't believe it's taken me hundreds of commentaries to get to Clint. <clears throat> but I find myself doing more and more of them. I'm intrigued by the alchemy. I'm definitely going to do more. But whatever I find in future films of Clint, this is the definitive Clint Eastwood movie for me. I didn't grow up with westerns. I grew up with G.I. Joe. Not a big fan of westerns. I know Clint primarily through this because this is a family favorite we watched this a lot on VHS back in the day back when my brother was going in the military and all you know back in that time and and my parents love Clint Eastwood they love this movie they they love the young whippersnappers getting their comeuppance and all of that and then it's got its layers with Jessica and her family I haven't had this shot of whiskey. Well, here's to you, Gunny Highway, DeMille, Jessica, everyone. Mm. Semper Fi, do or die, drink up, smoke up. Yo ho, ho ho, may the source be with you. Yo, <clears throat> Joe. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Like in a movie, without a villain. Think about it, this movie had no villain. <clears throat> Not even major powers. He's just a major asshole. A major antagonist, an obstacle. But the real villain is inside yourself. Highways demons, recon's ego, power's ego in the prison they make for themselves. You must <clears throat> improvise 
adapt, overcome, improvise, deal with limitations, adapt, learn, there's always another Horace line, overcome, the beast within yourself. Break that cycle of returning to prison. Escape power's cave. The sky's the limit. Semper fi, je m'en Oui, oui, woo, woo. 